I recently watched Avatar The Way of Water at home again with the release of the 4K Ultra HD disc and on the one hand I enjoyed the convenience of watching it from the comfort of my own couch, being able to pause and analyze scenes in details, however I couldn't help but miss the immersive IMAX experience, one that I'll probably only have when the third Avatar movie releases. Avatar Theory here, hope you're doing well and having a fantastic day and as the 4K Ultra HD version, the disc version of The Way of Water recently released, I was able to get my hands on the steelbook edition, which I did do an unboxing if you want to check out that video. Now as I watched the disc version on my PlayStation 5 twice, I watched it on my 4K 55 inch Philips LCD TV and I couldn't help but wish I had an OLED instead of an LCD. The difference in picture quality between streaming and watching from a physical disc was noticeable, especially if you have limited bandwidth. If this is your first time watching Avatar 2 at home, you might kick yourself for not watching it in the IMAX instead. Without delving too much into the movie itself, I must say that The Way of Water is a real treat, particularly if it's your first time experiencing the movie. The story takes place a decade after the events of the first movie, and although the opening section felt a bit rushed, it quickly brings the viewer up to speed with the present events. Reuniting with characters like Jake and Atiri on Pandora felt like coming home after a long time away. It was heartwarming to see how they had built their family and prioritized their children. However, their peaceful life is disrupted when the RDA returns with Recoms seeking revenge on the Sully family. The introduction of Recom Quaritch was exciting and his rivalry with Jake was as intense as ever. Although the circumstances of his return were briefly mentioned, I wish more time had been dedicated to exploring that aspect. The Medkaina clan, with its stunning ocean vistas and vibrant marine life, was a visual marvel. Director James Cameron and his creative team did a fantastic job of capturing the underwater world of Pandora. New characters like Tonawari and Renal had a strong presence on screen, although I would have liked to see more of them throughout the movie. Their stories intertwine with Jake's feud with the RDA and it was interesting to witness the Sully's adapting to their new life in the water. Each of the Sully children receives equal character development to some extent, but some have more intriguing story arcs that could lead to exciting developments in future movies. The RDA introduces powerful new technology, which is showcased throughout the film. However, one major aspect that was hyped up didn't receive much screen time, which was disappointing. The scenes involving the Tulkuns were among my favorites as they played a significant role, particularly in their interactions with the RDA. Pycan's moment from the trailer was a jaw-dropping highlight for me. The third act of the movie can be summarized as one big action scene with some character development interspersed. However, some characters didn't receive the screen time they deserved. It's evident which characters the sequels are building towards and there are emotional moments that I can't discuss due to spoilers. There are plenty of callbacks to the first movie and the closing moments left me eagerly anticipating Avatar 3. The underwater scenes remained breathtakingly gorgeous as I found myself smiling throughout the entire movie. I didn't experience any moment that took me out of the movie, unlike when I watched this movie on streaming services because at certain areas there were some buffering issues. With the 4K Ultra HD disc version being 7.1 surround sound compared to the 5.1 on streaming, I watched it with two different audio setups. When I watched it on my Philips 4K TV, I had a Philips 3.1 surround sound bar which did a good job in making the voices stand out with deep sounds especially when you hear Pyacon speaks, but when I watched it the second time, I had my Sony PlayStation 3D Pulse headset which gave me far superior sound. That is likely because the headset cuts out a lot of outside noise and it has far better surround sound experience, thus I felt the sound with a proper headset gives you the best experience. Unless of course you have something like a 7.1 surround sound setup. Interestingly enough, there was a lot of background chatter that I heard in the headset that I never really picked up when I watched the movie. Small tidbits of characters talking in the background, Spider saying to Norm that he has to get an avatar, and just overall small details that makes the world feel more immersive. As for the bonus features, it does give you over 3 hours of bonus content on a separate disc, but most of that was already available if you purchased it digitally. You also get a Blu-ray disc of the movie, but at 1080p compared to 4K, you'd want to watch the 4K version. Overall, Avatar 2 is an incredible experience. The story has some emotional beats with intense action scenes, the visuals is by far superior than any movie I've seen, and it's certainly the best 4K ex movie experience that I've ever seen, and I'm really excited to watch the original movie in 4K when that releases here in Norway. I'd even go as far as saying if, if that if you were looking to purchase a new TV, Avatar The Way of Water would be the reason to do so. If you want my full thoughts on the movie itself, have a look at my spoiler review and have a look at the rest of my channel for more Avatar content. Until next time, have a fantastic day and stay safe.